The west coast of Vancouver Island is Canada's boundary to the Pacific. Sandy beaches and a rocky shoreline mark the end of 5,000 miles of rolling seas which stretch westward to the Orient. With a climate that is cool and damp, the west coast is often a mist-shrouded, rugged landscape of dense rainforest, bird and sea life. The West Coast Trail, once a life-saving trail for shipwrecked mariners, now draws hikers from around the world. Southward, on the southern tip of Vancouver Island, lies Victoria, once considered the westernmost outpost of the far-flung British Empire. Today, Victoria is the provincial capital, but the city still retains an atmosphere of its British past. Victoria adjoins some of the finest sailing waters in the world, and yearly, sailors congregate for such renowned events as the Swift Shore and Victoria Maui races. And for those who'd rather plumb beneath the surface than sail upon it, no better salmon fishing is found anywhere. Record-breaking fish of every species are caught routinely all along the B.C. coast. A journey to Valhalla, one traveler wrote, must resemble this. And truly, the trip north to Prince Rupert along the B.C. coast, past rugged shoreline and soaring mountain peaks, past the mouths of fjords too numerous to count, does resemble a journey to the home of Nordic gods. Running eastward from the coast through the northwest corner of the province, the Yellowhead Highway leads the traveler inland through the densely forested coastal mountains.
The first travelers to this region arrived before the dawn of history via the Asian land bridge and settled here in the Hazeltons. Sand Village still embodies and displays the ancient culture. Crossing to the northeast corner of the province, mountains give way to rolling plains. From here, the prairies flow south and east to fill the entire interior of North America. The Peace River is one of the most recently settled regions of British Columbia, settlers arriving here in 1940 with the building of the Alaska Highway. But like the prairies, the Peace River's song is a song of open country, of big skies and land. Peace River itself is the site of one of the world's largest hydroelectric projects, supplying almost a third of British Columbia's power. And there is oil here, too, making the peace a prosperous new frontier. South and west of the Peace is central British Columbia, the Caribou Chilcotin and high country regions. Settlers came early to the Caribou, and with good reason. Site of the great Caribou gold rush, men and women came from around the world to seek their fortunes. And the lure of gold still brings people to the Caribou, but Nowadays, it's to pan amid the restoration of historic Barkerville. The Caribou Chilcotin is gold and cattle country. The rolling grassy hills make perfect rangeland and one of the prime beef producing regions of the province. And wherever you find cattle, there are ranchers, roundups, and a peculiar form of relaxation called the rodeo.
Only a hundred miles east of the dust and grasslands is the green and tranquil splendor of the Bowron Lakes. Mile after mile, the canoeist passes pristine wilderness and wildlife. Next door to the Bowron Lakes is the high country, the home of Kamloops and fighting trout. The Thompson River, flowing through the high country, is one of several glacier-fed rivers in the region and a favorite for river rafting. The snows and ice fields which feed the Thompson lie further east, high up in the Rocky Mountains. No description of the towering Rocky Mountains is complete without the word magnificent. Magnificent whether it's trail riding or the scenery. Whether it's hang gliding or heli skiing. And the Rockies are a place where nature and man are still trying to learn how to get along. In the southern Rockies, underground springs pour 480,000 gallons of hot mineral water into the pools at Radium. Next door at Kimberley, the city has imported Old Bavaria.
Down the road, Fort Steele was the first mounted police post west of the Rockies. The main rule for attracting tourists has always been the same. First, you build a way to get there. And then you sell the tickets. Nestled next to the Rocky Mountains in the southeast corner of the province are the Kootenays, a region of swift rivers, fresh mountain streams, and lakes which are deep and crystal clear. Lofty mountains, sunny valleys, and sparkling lakes are recurring themes as one moves westward through the Kootenays, and there's never a shortage of things to do. You can try something different every day, whether it's bathing in hot springs or exploring Cody Caves. the Kootenays. Fifty miles west of the Kootenays is the Okanagan, with its sun-drenched hills and orchards producing Canada's finest crops of fruit. The Okanagan is vacation land and Canada's warmest lakes. The Okanagan is summer sun and boat races and a game farm.
The Okanagan is Penticton and North America's largest square dance jamboree. The Okanagan is the Peach Festival and the Kelowna Regatta. The Okanagan even contains one of only two true Canadian deserts where annual rainfall is only 10 inches. The dryness of the region, the sand and sagebrush hills are caused by the Okanagan being located in the rain shadow of the coastal mountains, the last great barrier standing between the interior of British Columbia and the Pacific Ocean. West of the mountains lies the coast and Vancouver, economic center of the province. Thank you. 